Hello everyone, welcome to PeopleSoft channel where we simplify PeopleSoft concepts in everyday language. My name is Samir and in this video we are going to discuss about the two people code events which are search init and search save. In the previous episode we had an overview about all the people code events which are available and with the help of this event flow diagram we discuss the order in which they are executed for a given transaction. In this episode, we will discuss about the first two events in the event flow diagram, which are search init and search save. In today's episode, we will see the behavior of these two people code events and we will understand when exactly these two events get triggered. Also, we will see some sample use cases along with the code examples to have a better understanding of when to write people code for these two events. So, without further delay, let's start the discussion. Let's understand when search in it event is triggered. So, when you click on the content reference in your PeopleSoft system, then as soon as you click on the content reference, the search page initiation process takes place and this is the time during which the search init event is triggered. And once the event has been completed successfully, then the search page is displayed to the user. Which means, let's say we go to one of the content reference and as soon as we will click on this content reference, then the search init event will be fired and after completion of that event, the search page will be displayed to the user. Now, before we start writing people code, we should understand the two very important points regarding search init and search save. Now, for these two events, we can write people code at component record level or at record field level. So, if you are going to write the people code for these two events at the component record level, then that component must be a search record because search record is responsible to create the search page for your component. That's the first observation. And the second observation is that if you are going to write the people code for these two events in the record field level, then that particular field must be either a search key or an alternate search key. This is because the search page is made up of combination of fields which are either a search key or an alternate search key. Hence, we should take into consideration these two important points before writing people code for these two events. So let's write a simple with message for search in it event. This is the component for our page. So let's go to people code. Let's select the search record for our component. This is the search record and let's write the people code for search in it event. All right, so let's test the effect of this people code on our search page. So let's open the search page. This is the content reference and as soon as we click on this content reference, you can see the search init event is triggered, which is given by our with message people code. And then the search page will be displayed to the user. So this is how the search init event works in people code system. All right. So now let's look into the second event, which is search save event. The search save event is triggered when you click on the search button on the search page of your component or when you click on the add button in case you are in the add mode of the component. For example, right now if I click on the search button, then the search save event will be triggered and after completion of that event, the results will be displayed to the user. So let's test this behavior by writing a simple win message for search save event. 
So this is the component for our page. Let's go to people code. Let's select the record. Again, as we discussed, it should be the search record for the component. And let's select the event, which is search save. Let's write a simple with message. All right. So let's test the effect of this people code on our search page. So this is the search page. And as soon as we click on the search button, you can see the search init event is triggered. This message is coming from the people code we just wrote. And then the results will be displayed to the user based upon the search criteria. For now, we did not provide any criteria. So it is displaying all the rows which are available in the table. Similarly, when we are in the add mode of this component and if we try to add a new record. Now, if we click on the add button, you can see the search save event has been triggered and then the page to add the new value will be presented to the user. So this is how the search save event works in PeopleSoft system. All right. So now let's see some use cases to understand how to use these two events to write people code. In the first use case, we have a requirement that the system should generate employee ID for the new employee when user is trying to enter the information for the new employee, which means when user will click on this add a new value page, then the employee ID for the new entry should be automatically populated by the system. By doing this, user would not need to think about what should be the new employee ID and system will decide the employee ID for the new entry. Now we can leverage the search unit event in order to write the business logic for this requirement. As per the requirement, the employee ID should be populated during the search page initiation process. So right now, for example, we are having five employees with the employee ID one to five. So we will write a logic that will take the maximum employee ID, which is five in this case, and it will increment the maximum employee ID by one, which will be the new employee ID. So in this scenario, the new employee ID should be six. All right. So let's write the people code in the search unit event for our requirement. So this is the component. Let's click on view people code. Let's select the search record and let's write the business logic in the search unit event. So this is the people code for our requirement. Now let's test the effect of this people code on the search page. So this is the search page and as soon as we click on this add a new value page, you can see that the employee ID six is showing, which means that we have successfully completed the functionality by leveraging this search in it people code event. All right. So now let's move to the second use case for the second use case. We have a requirement to develop a functionality where the search operation should be performed only when user has provided at least one of the search criteria, which means when the user is on the search page right now, we are having five search criteria. So he should provide at least one search criteria and only then the search operation should be executed right now. As you can see, if we click on search without providing any criteria, it is executing the search operation. Now, what is exactly happening is it is trying to fetch all the rows which are available in the search record. And then it is retrieving all those rows and displaying it here. Now, imagine if we are working on a component such as a voucher component or a purchase order component, then this kind of behavior can create performance issue. This is because in those component, 
millions of transactions will be present so in that case it will be performance issue to retrieve all those rows also if multiple users are interacting in the same component then they might experience slowness in performing the search operation hence by developing this functionality we would force the user to provide at least one search criteria among the search key and the alternate search key and this way we can improve the search performance for the component all right so let's write the people code for our requirement in the search save event so this is the component let's go to people code let's select the search record and let's write the people code in the search save event so this is the people code for our requirement so let's test the effect of this people code on our search page so let's open the search page and right now if we click on search button without giving any of the criteria then we can see that we are getting the error to provide at least one criteria to perform the search and if we provide any criteria for example if we provide the employee id as 3 and if we click on search then we are able to see the employee id for the matching result and if we provide any other criteria such as name then we are able to see the search results as per our criteria in this way the search save event is usually used to write the business logic for form validation before performing the search operation and once all the values are valid for this search record then we can continue to perform the search operation all right guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope this content was helpful for you so if you like this content please give a like to this video and subscribe to the channel in the coming episodes we will cover the remaining people code events so please stay tuned for the same thank you